All right, the markets have closed down for three of the past four days, but the S&P 500 is still up almost 9% on the year. And tomorrow, the Fed is set to buy $105 billion of government bonds uh, on its way to a planned total of $600 billion in treasuries. Joining us now to talk about all this is David Tice, Federated Investors, Chief Portfolio Strategist for Bear Markets. He founded the Prudent Bear Fund in 1995 to give investors a chance to protect themselves against the declining stock market. And David, it's not something we've seen a declining stock market really since March of last year. I mean, it's been a serious bull run here. Well, it's been a rally off a, a, a severe bottom. There's no doubt. We got very, very oversold. Uh, the market's come back due to trillions of dollars of stimulus spending, backstops, guarantees, etc. Now Bernanke's going to throw another $600 billion. He's taken the Fed balance sheet from, say, $900 billion to $2.3 trillion. Now it's going over $3 trillion. You know, but back in October, you said to us you'd love to be bullish, but you'd love to do, you'd see that if we got, we kind of embrace austerity measures, David, and we start to kind of get our, our financial fiscal house in order. You know, we've had this deficit commission come out. Are these the kind of steps that you think will get us to that point that could make you bullish? Well, there, there's been so many commissions in the past, Carol, and everybody knows what we should do, but nobody has the courage and we don't have statesmen around to do the right thing. And unfortunately, we don't have the economists uh, with Wisdom that are telling people that we, we, we have to spend less. I mean, if the problem is too much debt, you, you can't add more debt to the system and fix things. And you don't think the results of the midterms are going to change that and things will start to not, get done? Not really. I mean, a pox on all their houses, really. The <laughs> Republicans and Democrats both spend money. The Republicans spend a little bit less than the Democrats do, but they, they all feel like they're the answer to people's problems, and it's not. We have to. The problem is we got into this trouble really 15, 20 years ago, and this Keynesian theory mm -hmm. that's trying to prime the pump and kick the can down the road, it's just not going to work. You know, we, we, Carol and I get emails from a lot of viewers who are predominantly bearish, right? They're always mm -hmm. pointing out the problems that we have, the unemployment, uh, the debt issues that we have. Uh, we have our most popular guests, I would say, are the bearish guys, right? We have Gary Schilling coming on, Nouriel Rabini. We get the best reaction to those kind of guests, but you're like the king of all bears. <laughs> and one thing I say to a lot of them and, and, and is that you just look at the market, we've had such a great run. I I mean, does it ever make you want to change your mind? Do you ever look and say, maybe I'm seeing this all too dramatically pessimistically? It does continue to get better in the markets, and the economy seems to be getting a little bit stronger every, every data point that we get. Uh, let me respond to that, Matt. I started my fund, as you said, at the end of 95, really the beginning of 96. We lost money four years in a row. You think I would have been tearing my hair out and that my hair would have gone all gray. I possess this academic understanding of the Austrian School of Economics. I understood that what the Fed was doing was inflating asset prices. I knew that would end. And really, understanding the Austrian School is like putting on a pair of glasses and then suddenly you can understand. Same thing that's going on now. I'm bloodied but unbowed. I don't know exactly when it's going to end, but this will end badly. This is a Ponzi scheme. When you see a Ponzi scheme in process, you know it's going to end badly. But how bad will it be? I mean, is it going to be worse than what we saw in 2008? Is it going to be a drop of, I know you've been saying 400 on the S&P. Do you really think that's going to happen, you know, in the next couple of years, in the next five years? They're trying to inflate stock prices, you know, by debasing the currency. That ends badly. But now, it seems to be working well for now. But it works well for a while, but longer term, it ain't going to work. But David, what about the pressure that's coming from overseas officials, if you will, who are kind of doing different policies? I mean, isn't that going to put pressure eventually on the Fed to kind of start unwinding? Oh, we, we have a mess, Carol. There's no doubt about it. I mean, Brazil has ticked at us. China's ticked at Everybody us. Is. Germany's ticked at us. Everybody's ticked at us. You know, the, we, we have problems around the world where 65 percent of the countries are either debasing their currency or keeping their interest rates too low. In order, So we have fiat money everywhere. What I was going to say is gold and the Dow will eventually cross. So maybe the Dow doesn't fall to 4,000, but maybe gold goes to 6,000. But what they're doing is they're debasing the currency. Somehow you got to protect yourself by, you know, gold or silver. What, what do you do? I mean, as a realistic investor, uh, you see the Fed inflating assets. You've seen it before. You've got to prepare yourself in your fund, right? I know you own gold. I know you own precious metals there. But what do you do to protect yourself against the upside of uh, asset inflation? I'm not involved day to day with the fund anymore, but Doug Nolan is very oriented towards uh, 
preservation of capital and losing as little money as possible in these rallies. It's still our mandate to be more short than long, but we try to lose as little money as possible. We aren't going to go back long, but our gold and silver does protect us, and we're very defensive about the composition of our portfolio. But how much does that protect you, David? When I look at this market, pick your asset class, and everything's been going up. I mean, how much protection has that really provided you guys? Well, we're, we're, we're down more than we'd like to be this year, and I can't say the market's going to reverse and go down in two or three weeks. Maybe they get through the end of the year. But all I know is I sleep better at night. Most of my shareholders sleep better at night being short rather than long because, uh, unfortunately, with the kind of problems we have in the system and this, you can't print your money, print your way to prosperity. If you mm. could, then Latin America would be the world's leader. So Latin why, America's why tried the, this before. It doesn't work. Why is the Fed doing it, then, in your view? Because, right, if it makes sense, everybody gets it, understands that this is not the way to do it. Why, why, is the, why does the Fed continue to do it? They, sure, they, surely Ben Bernanke's read Hayek himself, right? <laughs> yes. Well, Certainly it's I'm on not YouTube. sure. I think uh, Bernanke is misguided. These guys have been dealt a deck of cards that's really, really tough. There's no doubt about it. I'm not saying that this is the, 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 the least bad solution, but it is going to end badly. They're very, very short-term oriented. Congress and the president are trying to get through the next election after the next election. It would be very, very painful to go through austerity. There's no doubt about it. But the pro Henry Kaufman was asked at a symposium we sponsored 10 years ago, and he was asked, what do you do now? And he essentially threw up his hands because he said the Fed missed its timing. The Fed screwed up by not doing something before. Well, do you think that, um, I mean, so after studying what happened in 2008, 2007 was the top of the market, uh, how do you find out when the inflection point or what, what, what is the flashpoint that causes a downturn after at massive asset inflation, after huge uh, over leveraged runs? What does it take to kind of trip things? I wish I could figure that out, Matt. I, tell you. <laughs> I, I wish I could figure that out. But it, it, it's going to go on until it quits going on. But there are bubbles all over with lots of pins out there. I mean, we have the pigs. We have China is still a massive bubble. Mm -hmm. We have now we have Disney and Cisco both disappoint. Uh, 11, when earnings start coming in again, a lot of these companies got through, you know, very easy comparisons and they've cut a lot of costs. Are they going to continue to uh, meet expectations next year? There's all kind of potential problems out there. All right. Hey, David, thanks so much for joining us. David Tice uh, coming to us from Dallas. We're going to get a lot of emails. I know. Drop I by can New feel York it. City. David, thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much.